osteoporotic changes in the jawbone. Can we detect osteoporosis from the jawbone? Now, osteoporosis is a condition characterized by low bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration of bone tissue, leading to enhanced bone fragility or increased risk of fracture. It is commonly seen in postmenopausal women, but it may also occur in both men and women with underlying conditions or major risk factors associated with bone demineralization. Now, the most common sites of bone fracture due to osteoporosis are vertebral and hip fractures, although it can happen at any skeletal site. The WHO defines osteoporosis as a bone density that falls 2.5 standard deviations below the mean for young, healthy adults of the same sex, which is also referred to as T-score of minus 2.5. Now, if you have T-score of less than minus 1.0, but above minus 2.5, then you will fall into a category of osteopenia, which is, which is defined as having low bone density and are also at increased risk of osteoporosis. Now, more than 50% of fractures among postmenopausal women, including hip fractures, occur in this group with low bone density. So how do we measure bone mineral density? Now the gold standard of this measurement today is DXA. DXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. Now this technique uses two X-ray energies to estimate the area of mineralized tissue and the mineral content is divided by the area and also corrected for body size. It is usually performed in lumbar spine and hip. Now, bone spurs, which are common in osteoarthritis, tend to falsely increase bone density of the spine, which will cause a problem in measuring the spine in older individuals. For standardization of the result of the test, T-score or Z-score are used for evaluation. So what happens in, a, in the jawbone when the patient or when people lose their teeth? There was a study which used DXA for maxillary and mandibular bone for 49 indentulous patients. And what they found was bone mineral density of the maxilla was greater in molar region compared to anterior and premolar region. However, in the mandible, it was the opposite, which anterior and premolar region had higher bone mineral density compared to molar region. Performing DXA is relatively expensive examination, and it cannot be used as a screening tool to evaluate many people. So, as a dentist, what thought we might be able to do is because we take panoramic x-ray frequently we thought maybe we can use this as a screening tool to see if we can refer the patient out for a further evaluation if we see something going on in the panoramic x-ray. First they started to see the width of the inferior aspect of the mandibular bone, the cortical bone and they also came up with the index, which is MCI, Mandibular Cortical Index, which used a simple three-staging method to evaluate the quality of the cortical bone. And also cortical width at the mental foramen to standardize the measurement of the mandible. Or they came up with PMI, which is the ratio of the thickness of mandibular cortex to the distance between the mental foramen and the inferior mandibular cortex. There are a whole bunch of other um, index or measurements which attempted to see if there is a correlation of the panoramic x-ray findings with a systemic or lumbar or femur or a hip um, bone mineral density. 
So let's take a look at this panoramic for example. This is 48 year old female. I believe this was Hispanic. But um, no diagnosed history of osteoporosis, nor taking any medication or any vitamin supplements. As you can see, the inferior border, the cortical aspect of the mandible, is relatively sharp and clear, which will probably fall in the C1 category if you use the MCI. But if you see this type of patient, you will probably not going to refer this patient to a internist for a further evaluation. Now let the next patient, which is a 70-year-old female with bronze um, bisphosphonate-related osteonecrosis of jaw. And this is the lesion you can find here. So obviously this patient has been taking bisphosphonate, which is a medication for osteoporosis. So this patient had a diagnosed osteoporosis. Now if you look at the inferior border, cortical border of the mandible, you can see the endosteal aspect of the cortical bone is resorbed, which will which presents C3 category in MCI. However, if you look at the inferior um, cortical width of this mandible under mental foramen, this seems pretty thick. However, panoramic has a distortion of the image, and when you measure this width of the cortical bone of the mandible, what they usually do is they make the patient bite on a 3.5 millimeter ball bearing on the premolar region to standardize those um, distortion. And since this patient does not have that in this panoramic, we cannot um, evaluate the width of the cortical aspect of this mandible. Now let's take a look at the next patient, which is 79-year-old female, again with bronze lesion, meaning she has been diagnosed as osteoporosis and taking oral or IB bisphosphonate. Now it is very hard to evaluate her cortical, inferior cortical aspect of the mandible. And also, we can't really see where her mental foramen is. And this type of panoramic x-ray, there is no way we can evaluate. So can we use panoramic x-ray image to detect osteoporosis? First, we have to understand that structure of alveolar bone is largely influenced by the presence of or absence of teeth, especially in the tooth-bearing regions. So it is quite hard to look at their trabecular patterns or the density of the bone to see if the patient has osteoporosis or not. And any other bones in our body doesn't change like it does in our jawbone. And also, the quality of the jawbone is also influenced by the presence of inflammation or infection. So it is questionable to assume that we can standardize this quality or the density of the jawbone to assess the systemic bone mineral density. And there are a whole bunch of literatures which performed to see if any of these index correlates with the skeletal bone mineral density and they found no correlations. As opposed to these publications, of course there are literatures which found correlations between these indexes. 
or indices with a systemic bone mineral density. So there are people who suggest it correlates and there are people who suggest it does not correlate. But here what we are forgetting is that osteoporosis is not just a single factor disease or change in our body. It can be emphasized or it can be reduced um, if from the ethnicity or people's um, daily life, the age, gender, or if they use um, systemic cortical steroids. And there are many factors that changes the bone mineral density or the risk of the developing osteoporosis. So what we need to do is not only look at the panoramic x but we have to look at more multifactorial, multidimensional aspect of this condition, osteoporosis. So what physicians are using clinically to assess if the patient needs to be treated for osteoporosis or not is they don't only use the bone mineral density now. They use this tool called FRAX. Now this FRAX tool has been developed by WHO which will ask for ethnicity of the patient, gender, age, smoking or alcohol consumption history, uh, previous fracture or use of systemic corticosteroids, um, presence of rheumatoid arthritis, many, many factors and they put it together, together to calculate the 10-year probability of hip fracture and major osteoporotic fracture. If we are to use the panoramic x-ray and determine if the patient needs to be referred out for a further evaluation of osteoporosis, we need to ask these questions too. Looking at the panoramic x-ray and calculating for those index is not sufficient. Now, there is a project called Osteodent, uh, which will give you Osteodent Index, which I still need to look into deeply to feel confident in talking about it, but it seems like somewhat similar to what Frax did um, to develop, to come up with this type of calculation tool. Um, it is looking at number of teeth or attachment loss, not only the panoramic x-rays, but they're still trying to add more factors into it. And they saw a significant correlations between the osteodent index and the result of a frax tool. So this may be something that may be useful, but uh, something we can keep an eye on it to see if, we'll, if it will be more standard of use um, to refer out the patient. So that's the presentation of, for osteoporosis if panoramic x-ray is good enough to refer the patient out for a further evaluation. My opinion uh, from all these literature is Panoramic x-ray itself is not sufficient, but it may be if you look into more multifactorial aspect of osteoporosis. Thank you.